If you see a caddisfly hatch, this is one of the stages that you'll want to have in your toolbox. Examining the life cycle of the caddisfly, we'll see there are several stages and several variations. For this video, we're specifically going to look into a fly that imitates the ferret adult right here. And that fly is going to be our deep sparkle pupa. Our little insect starts out as a larva after being hatched, and it can be a cased one or a free living one. Either way, they will spin a cocoon or they will close up their little case and begin the transformation into an adult. After the metamorphosis, a caddisfly comes out as a fully mature adult in a pupa skin. That is this guy here. The fly that imitates the adult in the pupa skin will be a deep sparkle pupa designed by Gary LaFontaine. This stage of the insect's life, it is very vulnerable to being a snack for the trout. As it goes from the bottom of the lake or creek, goes through the water column to emerge as an adult in or near the surface. We'll start out with the Mustad R43 hook. Now that is one extra fine, three extra long, which is great because it makes room for our bead. Our tungsten bead is a 2.5 millimeter or 3.30 seconds uh, countersunk bead. And I've started the uh, thread behind the bead. It is a brown 14 knot, and I've worked my way back to the bend of the hook. Before we start with the outer body, I want to do a quick outtake that discusses some details we should be concerned with for the outer body. The outer body of the deep sparkle pupa adds several attributes to the fly. First, it gives the illusion that the insect is still in the pupa skin, and that is best achieved by making sure the color of the outer body complements the color of the inner body. Do not make one outer body color for all your flies. You'll lose out on the effectiveness of the pattern. The outer body also aids in holding air bubbles. The adult fruit releases air bubbles within the pupa skin to give it some buoyancy to rise to the surface. Also, this outer body will imitate an air bubble. A couple things again, do not use too much yarn. You just want the right amount so you can see through to the inner body, but still be able to hold air bubbles. And then again, do not use the same color yarn for all your flies. For our outer body, I am going to use an orange Antron yarn and a single strand. Not all yarns are created equal. The ones I've measured are 55 to 60 microns and have about 70 fibers per strand, but some of the strands on the textured yarns are stiffer or have a little more crinkle. The one I really like but didn't have in the orange is Z yarn. That's probably one of the best textured yarns out there I know for making the bodies. But depending on your yarn, you may need more or less than a single strand. I'm using a single strand. This comes off the cardboard. I like to tie a knot in one end, square off the other with scissors. Just give it a comb to make sure you don't have any tangles in it. And we're going to just take, take half of these. So I got two halves, one with the one knot, one without. And we'll start with the one without the knot. We're going to bring this underneath our hook and our thread, and we're going to mount it on the side closest to the fly tire. That's up and over. We'll do one more wrap. Make sure that that's on the side. Grab a hold, lightly hold your uh, thread and have some tension on it, and then pull back. If you pull the yarn straight back, then it'll naturally cup around the hook shank. I'll do another wrap just to hold it here. We'll take our half strand with the knot in it, bring it underneath, and our bead is moving. Now we're going to hold that on top here a second until we get a wrap. Okay, then I'm going to move that to the side, do another wrap, make sure that's on that side, and we're going to pull that, and it's going to want to cup around the hook shank as well. Do another wrap. Okay. 
Let's hold our finger on there and let's just tie some of these frays. For the rib, I'm going to stick with the color scheme and use a extra small copper wire. We're just going to mount that on top. And it's going to wrap around on us. That's fine. All right, so our fly should look like this, and we're all ready to go for the outer body. Now we're going to work on our inner body. For our inner body, we're going to take a half, we're going to mix half rabbit and half antron. Now, I really do like this uh, variety pack, the Caddis Life Cycle. Uh, its mixture is with a little bit of fur and antron, so you don't have to add as much uh, rabbit fur to it. So mix it, and then you want to chop it into lengths of about three to four millimeters. And this will really complement the outer body. So the outer body, you really won't even be able to see it that much in the water because it is masked by the inner body, but you'll still have the effects of an air bubble. See the little rope there? And we'll just wrap that forward. I'm going to put a half itch in here this time. And we'll just counter wrap our rib going underneath. Now for our outer, outer body, we're just going to bring this forward along the side. Tie that in right behind the bead. Keeping it on the side. Then using your tweezers, move it to the top and bottom. Then we'll bring the other side up alongside there. And we'll do the same. Now, if you've seen that you made a mess of it, you can always pull these tighter and start over again. So. Take a hen hackle feather and we're going to prepare the tip. Now this is going to replicate these little antennas sticking out from the pupa skin. Give it a little action. Okay, lay that best you can. I'm going to capture that guy. Then we're going to come around. One wrap. two wraps, and that'll be it. 
and we'll go over and eat over those. Okay. We're going to finish off our fly here. We'll we'll do a half hitch real quick. And then just want to thin it out a little bit. 